Hi guys, I hope you're good. I've left New York and I'm now in Canada. I landed in Toronto, checked into the hotel, dropped off all my stuff, went for a walk, something to eat, jumped on the subway, made a new friend, geeked out over some trains, and then went to the top of the CN Tower. Did you know? The CN Tower, which was once the world's tallest structure, was built by the Canada National Railway Company, and that's where it gets its name from. I did not know that until I visited and read about it. The view from the top was incredible. I highly recommend doing it if you get a chance to come to Toronto. I have an early start in the morning, so let's head back to the hotel and get some shot eye. Good morning! We are on the way to the Niagara Falls. We're just passing over the Welland Canal now. If you squint, you can just make out the lock gates in the distance. Here we are at the Niagara Falls. These are the Canadian or Horseshoe Falls, which is the largest of the three waterfalls that make up the Niagara Falls. The first thing I did when I arrived was to head for the Journey Behind the Falls attraction. It's a series of tunnels that take you 151 feet below ground near the base of the Horseshoe Falls. The views are spectacular, but it gets busy very quickly. When you're in the tunnels, you can feel the walls rumbling and the constant thundering sound of the gushing water. It's just incredible and real reminder of the power of nature. In the distance are the American Falls. There is an outside observation deck, but unfortunately that's closed in the winter, as are many of the tourist attractions around the falls, including the boat tours. The Horseshoe Falls are the most powerful waterfalls in North America. Six million cubic feet of water flow over the falls every minute. The Canadian Falls drop 187 foot. They're 2,590 foot wide. That's over half as wide as Ben Nevis is tall. During low tourist season, which is the time that I'm visiting, and at night time, the flow of the falls is reduced by up to half by diverting the water to the nearby hydroelectricity plant. Another thing that I would have loved to do, but unfortunately is closed, is this incline railway. Something that is open is the Skylon Tower, where I'm heading next. The tower is 520 foot tall, giving breathtaking views over the falls. These are the American Falls. The bridge connecting the US and Canada is known as the Rainbow Bridge. The smallest of the falls is called the Bridal Veil vale Falls. The American, the Bridal Veil vale Falls are in the US state of New York and the Horseshoe Falls are in the Canadian province of Ontario. The island which separates the US from the Canadian Falls is called Goat Island. I realise that I am probably the only person who has ever said this, but I was expecting the falls to be bigger, and this is definitely not disappointment, just differing expectations I guess. In 1960, the Maid of the Mist tourist boat rescued a seven-year-old boy who had fallen over the Horseshoe Falls after the boat he'd been travelling in lost power and capsized. Miraculously, he was unharmed. There was time for a quick walk along this funky street, which is right by the American Falls. I was like a kid in a sweet shop. This street is right up my street. There is so much more to do in the area than just the falls. 
The American Falls are between 69 and 98 feet drop and are 1,050 feet wide. In March 1848, the falls stopped flowing for 40 hours due to an ice blockage. In 1912, the American Falls completely froze, but that is the only time on record that any of the falls have frozen completely. On the 24th of October 1901, a 63-year-old teacher called Annie Edson Taylor became the first person to ever go over the falls in a barrel. To prove that it was doable, five days earlier, she sent her cat over the falls in her barrel. Thankfully, he survived. What a horrible ordeal to put the poor thing through. Since Annie's successful trip over the falls, a number of other people have attempted to go over in barrels with mixed results. Through the bus window, you can see the type of barrel that people used to go over the falls. Our next stop was the Niagara Whirlpool. It's created by a near 90 degree bend in the river, and the whirlpool is up to 125 feet deep. Our tour guide said that it is the most dangerous stretch of river in the world. I so wished I was on one of those boats. The Niagara River drains Lake Erie into Lake Ontario. We continued our tour past the Niagara Escarpment and then on to the little town of Niagara on the Lake, which was so cute. It didn't feel real. I took a walk down to the shores of Lake Ontario, where I admired the view over a delicious ice cream. and then headed for a wee paddle. Before I knew it, it was time to leave. Next time you see me, I'll be back in London, but not before I savour the last moments of a perfect trip. Thank you for joining me and I will see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.